Hey there, welcome to another AYCB review. I'm Carlo and today I'm going to be reviewing Santa Monica, which is a tableau building game from AEG designed by Josh Wood. Uh, this is a two to four player game, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play. Um, in Santa Monica, players are acquiring cards to build their own unique beachfront version of this little town. Um, you're going to get people into your town, move them around. Where you place your cards is really important. There's a lot going on for such a little tableau builder here. I really like Santa Monica. Stick around, let me tell you why. So the first thing I'll say is I like tableau builders quite a bit. Uh, I have quite a few of these in my collection. My favorite one of all time probably being Race for the Galaxy. Uh, I'll try not to stick too much to comparisons here but uh, just in a genre that I feel like I've played quite a few games when I see a new one it takes uh, you know some new mechanics and new new fun things to really stand out and, and attract my attention and Santa Monica has plenty of that uh, the main thing is the way you're building your tableau and a lot of tableau builders you collect these cards and sometimes the location uh, where you actually put them doesn't matter or you put them into play and you gain an ability or something but you might not need to look down at the card as often in Santa Monica because you're building everything in these two rows which has like your your beach cards and then on the bottom your street or your beach um, sorry your boardwalk cards there's this interesting dynamic where the placement of everything truly does matter uh, sometimes you place a tile that or a card that tells you you need to be adjacent to another type of card so you're already thinking okay if I put this here am I going to get this other one later does this even fit in with my strategy um, you know and then you've got this dynamic of the people that get populated in your town you've got the tourists and the um, locals and your VIPs and it's this extra little sort of resource management thing in the game where when you get these cards that add them you don't have the option of whether to add them so once they're there you got to find something for these people to do and it kind of plays in really well with the, the the theme where you've got these little activities going on and these places that you want people to visit and you can't have people just standing around and the activities themselves even have limits on how many people you can get in there so not only do you have to be weighing the decision of whether or not you want to take people into your city by placing these cards but how late in the game do you want to do that are you going to be able to move them around or are they going to be stuck somewhere unable to do anything or the card that you're placing that gives you those is that card near any activities or are they on the opposite end of your your little beachfront so there's a lot to consider here it feels like considering every turn you just have the choice of the four cards in the front row aside from the sand dollar actions you really only have four cards to choose from each turn and yet the decisions feel pretty brutal sometimes sometimes you're not even taking a card that you really want it's just a matter of which one are you able to to do the most with even if all four of them are kind of maybe not so good for you um, then you're looking ahead because you have that back row so you're thinking if I take this uh, this card here the next one's gonna slide forward and now that's gonna be where my opponent um, can grab it and I know they want that card so you might be thinking oh, I won't take that because I don't want to set someone up just talking about opponents and player interaction there isn't a whole lot of it in this game but I think for this type of game it's it's a good amount um, because it's kind of a more it has that more laid-back relaxing vibe because of the whole beach theme and everyone's kind of building their own thing and I think if there was a level of player interaction that was mean where other players could you know target me and either move my cards around or force me to take certain cards I think it would kind of ruin a bit of the fun because it would be even tougher to, to strategize right the game's hard enough as it is I've, I've played this quite a few times and I've never been able to get anywhere near accomplishing everything I wanted to do it always feels like there's extra people standing around who you didn't get to move to activity rings or you know card scoring objectives that you didn't uh, didn't meet and a lot of that is because there's just so much to do so you know having relatively minimal player interaction feels good in the sense that you know I can I can focus a little more on what I'm doing without worrying about my opponents but there's still enough there that like I said if I want to decide on what card I'm taking based on which card comes to the front of the row um, or even the whole dynamic with the food truck and the foodie which is really cool I've never seen something quite like this in a tableau builder either where you're getting these bonus actions for taking the card above one of those and then they're moving so you're thinking oh, if I move this truck here then on the next turn you know the truck's going to be in the same spot with the foodie and someone else can take that double action so even when you know which card you might or might be the best one for you you have to think about the other things that come into play with taking that card from the row so there's a lot to consider on your turns and I really like that uh, just going back to the theme and artwork for a second too I think it works so well in this game uh, it's one of the most kind of involved um, tableau builders in that sense where the theme really plays in 
by the end you look and you have this beautiful little unique beachfront that you probably have never seen in any other game and you actually it feels a little more involved than a lot of other tableau builders because again you're moving these people around to these different places you know every card has unique artwork uh, unique scoring objectives on them there's so much to see in this deck of cards uh, again every time you play you're going to see different stuff and it's truly a joy to just watch your tableau uh, get built throughout the game whether you win or lose um, you know the sand dollars at the end of the game if you don't have cards that specifically score for them they're not worth anything other than just a tiebreaker but there's a few cards in there that let you score for them and then also they let you take these sand dollar actions throughout the game which sometimes can let you take two cards in one turn or sometimes let you take cards from that back row which you normally can't get to and they often let you move uh, more people around in your town so the more people you acquire um, you know the higher chances you want to actually be using these uh, sand dollar actions to move them around properly so it's another dynamic where you have this kind of stream of kind of little resource or economy thing with the sand dollars and you have to pick and choose when to spend them and what to actually do with them to, to get you know the most effectiveness out of them. Going back to one more thing I said about how each game feels different it's not only the cards that you're acquiring but because there's these six different starting feature tiles you know you can even if you pick the same one you're gonna get tons of different cards throughout the game but you can pick different starting feature tiles to have a different strategy to go to from or go for from the start then like I said you have different uh, sand dollar actions there's two different ones out every game out of eight so that switches up a lot of what you can actually do um, with your cards in your tableau throughout the game. Then you've got the actual scoring objective card here, which uh, changes every game. You've got that blue one, the orange one, and the green one. So you're scoring for different configurations of your waves and your chains and your unplaced people. So there's always these kind of recurring themes of wanting things kind of a certain way, but depending which scoring objective and sand dollars you have out in your starting tile, everything is kind of tweaked just a little bit so it's like every time you play you have a different puzzle to figure out from the start right away from the beginning you look at the, the display of eight cards the sand dollars what you're trying to go for at the end and your goal on your thing and you can kind of make a plan right from the start that's probably going to be different every time you play so I, I really like the variability in this game and kind of the replay value for for coming back to try again another thing I'd like to talk about is player count and play time so on the box it says it takes about 45 minutes I think it really depends on the player count. Uh, with two players, you can probably get this done in about half an hour, maybe even a little quicker once you're really familiar with how the game flows. It would take longer with three or four players just because, again, the game ends when any player gets their 14th card. So, you know, if I take a turn and then three other players have to go instead of just one, obviously it is going to take longer. That being said, I don't think the length would really bog the game down. Um, I certainly prefer it with two for sure. I think it works best. With three, it still works really smooth. With four would probably be maybe the least enjoyable, but still works totally fine. I've played a lot of other four player games that would be a lot slower and have more downtime, so I wouldn't say it's an issue. So it's clear that the artwork and just the look of the game is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it really ties into the theme well. The iconography itself is also pretty solid overall for a tableau builder. At first it looked to me like there were a lot of symbols on the cards and I thought the learning curve was gonna be a little trickier, um, but the rule book is pretty, pretty solid straightforward and all the icons really make sense it's just a matter of kind of picking everything up and internalizing it and getting used to it but once you kind of learn the rules of the game it tends to flow pretty quickly and it, and it feels pretty simple there's a couple minor issues with some of the iconography on some of the cards like uh, there's a you know two different cards where one actually just has the sand dollar thing that equals one point other ones say one sand dollar equals a point but the icons look different even though they mean the same thing um, there's a couple cards where the placement or sorry the scoring opportunity section actually has a placement bonus which should be more on the left rather than on the right so there's a couple little minor things that you know have caused me to maybe go online and look for a couple clarifications but uh, other from that uh, other than that overall I'd say the iconography and everything is pretty uh, straightforward and, and really intuitive what really hammers home Santa Monica for me is just how it all comes together as a total package um, the fact that it ends when the 14th card is placed it feels kind of like the perfect length of the game where you know, like most of those great games where it feels like it ends right before you wanted it to, just when you felt like you kind of were getting a grip on things, and it makes you want to feel like you want to restart right away and, and try to do better. So I like that kind of timing. Um, in terms of the kind of randomness and luck aspect, uh, obviously as with any card game that's primarily cards, there's a certain degree of luck in terms of what comes up in the display. You might be gaining cards that ask you to get, you know, be looking for specific tags to create chains, and not many of those tags will come up, or, you know, you need to 
get a bunch of these people in these activity rings and not a lot of cards are coming up that let you get people. Every once in a while you might feel slightly unlucky, but usually there's ways to mitigate the luck, whether it's with the sand dollar actions or taking the cards above the foodie or the food truck to get those little bonuses. Um, so even when you might feel like it's a little unlucky, it's a pretty laid back quick game, so it never really feels like it'll affect your, your enjoyment of it. I think it's kind of the perfect balance of luck and strategy. Um, or luck and skill, I should say. And uh, yeah, lots of interesting, difficult decisions to make throughout. And that's what I've got to say about Santa Monica. I like Josh Wood games a lot. I mean, he designed Cat Lady. Um, he was the developer for Tiny Towns and designed the expansion. I think he has another hit with Santa Monica. If you're looking for a kind of unique tableau builder that does a lot different from other ones out there, uh, something that's a really nice artwork and theme that's really going to pull you in and that offers a lot of replay value, Santa Monica is an excellent choice. Highly recommended. Um, thanks for watching. As always, you can check out any other content we have on our YouTube channel or at allyoucanboard.com. Um, if you enjoy this content as well as any other content we're doing, please consider liking and or subscribing. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.